Welcome back guys to episode 3 of Herminating the Meta. I hope many of you herminated the ladder these couple of days because I'm going to add more fuel to the fire by presenting you a control warrior deck. I know, I know, many of you guys would go like, oh how boring, it's a never changing warrior deck. You guys might think that, but I believe that this warrior deck has enough of a variant to overcome mere matchups while also doing well against other matchups. So today I'll be presenting you Kit Kat's Godlike deck. There are a lot of variants of this warrior deck because he changes accordingly to the meta, but I believe this variant has a lot of potential and I've been doing really well with it. So just a warning guys, this deck needs a lot of practice and is really not beginner friendly because you would need to know when to conserve your cards and when not to. So this is a really slow play paced deck and usually plays to a fatigue. So if you like playing fast decks like Zoo, this is really not a deck for you, and you have been warned. So the first card we'll talk about is Execute. Easily one of the best removals for big creatures. You have tons of direct damage to injure a creature and follow up with Execute to easily take them down. So I wouldn't recommend using this on small health minions because you have tons of other removals you can use that we will go over later. Shield Slam, another great removal card, especially you can gain more armor due to the addition of Shield Maiden, and this card is also similar to Execute. So in order to take down big creatures with this card, you usually want to combo it with Shield Maiden or Shield Block. So some may ask, which should I use to clear minions first, Execute or Shield Slam? I really recommend Shield Slam since your opponent has a possibility of shredding all your armor in the following turn, render rendering this card useless. Whirlwind. Deals 1 damage to all minions on the field. This is an activator for many cards like Armorsmith, Gromarch, and Acolyte of Pain. This can also fend off low health minions from aggro decks. Fiery War Axe. Needless to say, one of the best early removals and can almost clear anything that is played in turn 1 or turn 2. Something like a single buff 2-3 Undertaker would be ideally removed by the Fiery War Axe. A Noratron, the newest addition to the deck by Kids Cast, as he believes that it has great potential. I also believe it has great potential because you can waste the opponent's weapon dur durability, especially for the mirror matchup, which is crucial and it makes a huge difference. So this card also fends off a lot of aggression from aggro decks, so you can stall for the late game. Armorsmith, while with the addition of a Noratron, we will be playing only one of this card. It's a great card to gain armor while synergized with Whirlwind and Death Bites Death Rattle, which also has a Whirlwind effect. So this card can be played early to fend off early aggression if you need it to be. Cruel Taskmaster can be an activator for Gromash, um, Armorsmith, or Acolyte of Pain, but can also be used for removal against more aggressive minions like Leprono. Shield Block, great life gainer, source of card draw, and also a combo piece with Shield Slam. Acolyte of Pain, a great source of card draw or used to fend off early aggression. I usually would not place this out blindly because I like to optimize my draws. I like to have at least tw draw twice with this card. So, so like for example, I usually play this card with Death by Death Rattle or Whirlwind to guarantee two draws. Big Game Hunter, an easy removal of big creatures. Work wonders with handlock and mirror matchups because you know that big creatures will be coming out late game. Death Bite, a removal that is just as good as True Silver Champion, but has a whirlwind effect when it is used up. So it has great synergy as an activator for cards like Acolyte of Pain, Armorsmith, and Gromash. Brawl can save you from sticky situations where your opponent overwhelms you with minions you can't clear all at once. I usually save this card as a last resort or my opponent runs out of steam and burns everything on the field. Playing this at that moment can really turn the tides of the match. Bomb Lover. The 5 drop slot can pretty much be replaced with anything you feel comfortable with. I will highly recommend you using Harrison Jones, which I don't have, or Lotheb if you don't like Bomb Lover. The reason why I don't play L Lotheb is because Miracle Rogue have been nerfed and somewhat not viable anymore, so in a sense Lotheb sort of got nerfed indirectly. So Bomb Lover I think is a similar is a similar to a mini Ragnaros that does efficient trades, especially when you know it will only hit minions. Sludge Belcher, a sticky minion that sticks to the board and provides enough taunts to fend off aggression. Shield Maiden, the card that made it possible to run two Anoratrons and one Armor Smith. This card is literally Shield Block on crack. This card can combo with Shield Slam to clear minions or simply give you a higher life total to stall till the late game. Needless to say, it also gives you a 5 5 body. The Black Knight. A lot of people are starting to run Anoratron and Sludge Belcher. So basically, if you don't want to run your Alex. 
Alexstrasza or your Gromash to an Anoyotron with a Divine Shield, cause that one too lives. I suggest running to Black Knight to kick that ass out of the board. Baron Geddon. A totem killer and to easily kill off low health aggressive creatures that aggro decks usually have. While also giving a 7-5 body. Dr. Boob, a must have for any deck now since this card is literally a 7 draw for 9-9. Nine nine. It gives you 2 bombs that can potentially remove minions or strike the opponent for lethal. Too much value not to have. Gromash, the core and the finisher of the deck. I usually play this with an activator like Taskmaster, Whirlwind, or Death Spice Death Rattle. This all depends on the situation though because you can also use this for desperate removal. Ragnaros, a card that gives an immense amount of pressure to your opponent. It does efficient damage to the face and potentially remove any minion it hits. The only downfall is the RNG, but most of the time it is worth it. Lastly, Alexstrasza. You can heal yourself to 15 health with this card or settle for lethal. Something like playing Gromash after this card while having any weapon equipped is, this is, is an example of setting up for lethal. Let's see what the God of Warriors KitKats has gifted us and see what this deck is made of. Alright, we're going to do our first match against a Hunter. So we want to mulligan something like a Fiery War Axe. Definitely we do not want to keep Execute because as we said before we want to use this till late game. Probably going to use against the Savannas. Brawl we might keep but I don't think we're going to keep this. We want a lower curve. What we want is Fiery War Axe and Death Bite. This is, this is ideal. This kind of <laughs> mulligan is ideal. Has a low curve and has di direct removal. Like Death Bite and Shield Slam. Perfectly what we want. I would coin this in. It wouldn't be wrong to start playing your cards. Like to... Okay, he just owled my Annoyatron. Which is not that good. Because I lost my Divine Shield. Loses us the whole purpose for Annoyatron. Little does he know, I have another one. I would, I would want to kill the owl first rather than the, the, clockwork gnome, is because I don't want him to use a spare part directly. He might be able to clear this with like I don't know, like a spare part or use it efficiently. So let's not let him use a spare part right away. It might screw me over. Okay. Let's play the armor smith because he's gonna attack into this taunt anyways, which gives me one one armor. Next turn, I'm probably gonna play the death bite and just wipe this one out. In a in a hunter matchup, I don't think I need to be I don't need to be playing conservatively, just because he's going to be playing a lot of cards on the field and he's gonna run out of steam. Oh god. I don't really want to take 5 damage to the face, because that would be really bad for me later on. So I'm gonna I'm gonna task master my armor smith, hit him with this. That's shield slime. Just because I don't want to take 5 damage to the face, because that five, that 5 damage is huge. It does exactly what the hunter needs to take me down. And then next turn I can play Slight Belcher. Mind if I roll need? What is that? Oh, it's just a taunt. Oh god, I thought he hit my face. That would be really scary. I'll play this taunt right here. I don't want to use the death bite to take even more damage. I can do that later when I play the shield maiden. Yeah, kill command. So he wasted one of his main sources of damage, which is really good for us. We can easily play the shield maiden next turn. Oh, bear getting really good draw. We can play that next turn to clear a lot of his minions. Because they're Probably gonna be low health minions. If we if we play Savannah High Main, we're gonna kill it and play Baron Geddon. All right, all 
Alright. So this board is really ideal for us. We can just hit the spider and just play Baron Geddon to clear his whole board. Oh, especially when we got like more armor too, my god. Because let's wipe his whole board. We can shield block next turn just to gain some health so we don't lose that much health. I mean, gain some armor so we don't really lose that much health. So here's a Savannah Jaime. This is really good because we have Alex Straza now, so we're I'm not scared to lose below 15 health. This is probably going to be a freezing trap, but I want to damage this somehow so I can use Execute. Oh, it's not. That's crazy. Oh, so this is a explosive trap, which is a lot. This is which is really good for me. Let's test it out first. So I didn't armor first before hitting the explosive trap. You usually want to have a habit of that, of taking damage first, then do, then put up armor. It's because you want to use the armor later on. He's trying to fish out for damage now. Yeah, he'll definitely kill that. There's no reason not to. I can I can clearly hit this. And just play out the Maybe I should have healed myself for 15 for that one damage. Maybe that would make a difference if he would kill me or not, but it depends. But I have shield blocks, so I shouldn't be worried. At least I don't think I should be worried. And he has no answer to this, so this is really good for us. So I'm gonna shield block right here. See what we get. Oh, another shield made it. Oh, this guy. Okay, so he conceded. Because he knows he can't get through my health. Oh, and we got streak bonus. Good stuff. Alright. Let's go on to our next game. Okay, this is our second matchup against a mage. Our mulligan would stay the same. We want direct removal early. Uh, this should be a favorable matchup to us, but it can go either way. It depends who gets more control on the board early. I definitely did not want to execute. It's not really what I wanted. Oh, he's playing an aggro variant too. I, def I definitely needed a fiery war axe. Well, I have to pass this turn. Yep. Yep. Definitely not what I wanted either. This is what I mean by Noitron being really good. It's because when I play my death bite with a coin, uh, it wastes one of my durability on the Divine Shield, and I have to attack it again just to kill it. And it's, uh, it's like 2 damage wasted too. Oh, now my Fire War Axe comes, oh my god. So what we can do here is hit this, hit this first. Then hit the Noitron again, kills this, and damages this so we can execute the Tinker Town Technician. Best case scenario though, that's the best case scenario. And then we can sort of stabilize with shield block and stuff like that. Oh man, I really hate that card. I really hate Micro Machine. That can screw you over. Oh, oh my god, he even frost bolted. This is really bad for us. I'm gonna shield block here just to survive one more turn. Because he's gonna wipe me off the next turn if I don't do something. And he really wants his Micro Machine to be buffed up. That's why he froze me in the face. Oh, he frostbolted me in the face again. That's literally the ideal draw for him. So I'm pretty sure this is what I can do now. There's nothing really much I can do. He had pretty... He, he was pretty smart. He frostbolted me a couple of times on the face just so that I can't attack. And he probably knew what I was doing. Yeah, so this is lethal right here. I wouldn't really say that was well played, but yeah. But yeah, this is some. These are some of the ways that Warrior can actually lose. Okay, so our next matchup is against a uh, Warlock. So we're gonna check if he's either Zoo or Panlock. We tell that by his Mulligan. If he Mulligan really few few cards, it means he's Zoo. If he Mulligans his whole hand, it means he's Panlock. So let's just take a moment to see how how many cards he Mulligans. I'm really gonna Mulligan just one. So he Mulligans three, so I assume that he's Panlock. 
The reason why I keep Shield Slam is because I can shield up till turn 4 and just use Shield Slam on the Twilight Drake. That's usually how you can handle it. But even if he's Zoo, I can easily just play the Fiery War Axe. Yep, so he's handlocked. But the interesting thing is he coined to tap, which is really weird to me. Oh, maybe he has a lot of Molten Golems. Or Molten Giants, that's what. But I still don't think coining in to tap is that good. Okay, he played something really early. Oh, he's probably gonna Owl and Silence. Gonna Owl the Watcher. Yup. Wow, man. Give me a break. I'm gonna shield block and shield slam this. He's not gonna be playing as high health Twilight Drake anytime since he played two cards already. So I'm not really scared of it. I can easily use a Death Bite and finish it off later on. Because I also have a Sludge Belt Drake. He's gonna hit into it eventually with his Twilight Drake. Yeah, it's only 7 health, so it's actually not that bad. The best case scenario is that the Twilight Drake hits into my Sledge Belcher and my, the 2 1 hits it so it clears. So it injures the Twilight Drake and I can finish off with Death Blade. That's the best case scenario for me. But of course, it doesn't always go that way. We can only predict that much. He's, he's probably thinking of another way to destroy this. This turn 5, he can. Oh, Argus. Okay, that's pretty bad for us. So this still hasn't changed. I still think it didn't have changes. I just take a little bit more damage. So we're still pretty healthy right now, and he's pretty healthy as as well. So we don't need to be worried about Molten Giant for now. We can still stall the game and until I gain a lot of cards to deal with the Giants. That's really nice. So. We're in range of Siphon of Siphon Soul. I don't think I'll be playing Dr. Boo, but it's also good to play Dr. Boo. Just to make him waste Siphon Soul. But I wouldn't be able to armor up. And I value armoring up really uh, quite a bit. We'll play Dr. Boo on this turn. I'm probably playing into Siphon Soul. No, I'm playing to Hellfire, that's interesting. Wow, that is amazing. I would have never thought of that. I gotta remember that in turn 6, they can go Hellfire into Dark Bomb into Mortal Coil. That's freaking amazing. I'll play my Fiery War X so I have enough mana to play other things next turn, like Alex Straza for example. Okay, we have an answer for that, we have big game hunting. So if I hit him, his Molten Giants would be worth 5, if he taps, it would be worth 3 each. But it's closer for lethal because I have win condition of Bro Match Hellscream and Cruel Taskmaster. I hit him once in face. I have lethal next turn. If he doesn't clear this board. If it doesn't if he doesn't clear this board and he doesn't put any of any taunt, I have lethal next turn. Exactly, his multi chance worth five. So this is not really a big problem. Oh, especially when we have execute. That's that's freaking amazing. So he already played one of his Molten Giants, so I'm not really scared of another taunt. The only thing I have to be scared of is Draxus. But that's not really a big deal when I have a win condition like this. Just to, just to pressure him, I'm just gonna play Alex Draza. He's probably gonna Siphon Soul. There's no way he's not gonna Siphon this. Oh, so he's really not gonna siphon this. Okay, so I have lethal, I think. 
Yes, I do have lethal. Yeah, so this is how we figure out to beat War Handlock. So Handlock is not really invincible. Thanks for watching guys, and if you liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe as I will be updating regularly now and provide you guys with quality videos, so stay tuned.